Hey guys, Extra Large James Reeves for TFB TV here to talk to you about Glocks. There's a piece of internet wisdom you might have heard that I like to call the Jaeger Maxim. It's James Jaeger's most enduring contribution to the firearms community, and it goes like this. All handguns should be 9mm. All 9mm handguns should be Glocks, and all 9mm Glocks should be Glock 19s. Is it true? Of course it is, but that's not important. What is important is that the Jaeger Maxim leaves out one crucial piece of the puzzle. Which generation of Glock 19 is the best? We're going to find that out. Stick around. If you're watching TFB TV, you're obviously pretty smart, so you may have noticed the title of this video sort of gives away the clickbait. Well, yes, I do in fact think the Generation 2 Glock 19 is still the best gun ever made. To start with, what makes a Glock a Gen 2? Before the second generation of Glocks arrived in 1988, the Glock roster consisted of just the original G17 and the fully automatic G18. The second generation hit the market in 88 with an updated version of the G17, the G17 Long Slide, and the new G19, which is what passed for a compact pistol back before I was born. Glock Generation 2 lasted from 1988 until 1999, and during that time, Glock introduced pistols in 40 Smith & Wesson, large frame pistols in 45 ACP and 10mm, and also the subcompact, or baby Glock. Generation 2 Glocks are distinguished by the greatly improved front strap and back strap texture over the original G17 and prototype G19. They also don't have finger grooves or thumb rest cutouts, both of which were added to the Generation 3. Glock finger grooves are a polarizing subject, but at least we can agree that the thumb cutout on newer Glocks makes no sense. Where does your thumb go when you hold the pistol in a firing grip? I'll give you a hint, not there. I think this is the legacy of some Euro one-handed bullseye bullshit. Gen 2 Glocks have a cutout on the front strap to help strip empty magazines out. That cutout was a helpful feature on Generation 2 Glocks because older Glock magazines were not fully metal lined, which made them a bit lighter and more prone to flexing and sticking in the mag well when empty. Why they brought it back for the Gen 5 Glocks, I have no idea. The Gen 2 Glocks also do not have an accessory rail. In the late 80s and early 90s, the accessory rail hadn't been invented yet, so you can't fault them for that. Other than that, not much has changed in the House of Glock over the years because nothing had to change. Between 1988 and 1998, the Gen 2 Glock 19 was unquestionably the overall best gun you could buy. It does everything. It is a lightweight, affordable, reliable, accurate, durable, high-capacity pistol you can carry concealed with minimal effort. Even in the year of our Gaston 2020, the Glock design isn't dated. 30 years ago, Glock was way ahead of the curve, and it's only very recently that other manufacturers have caught up. If you ever wonder why Glock seems to drag their feet when introducing new designs and features, it may be because they already lapped the competition and they're just killing time so they don't win by too much. Like being so far ahead of your kid sister on Diddy Kong racing that you start driving backwards. Here's the spread of Glocks in my stable right now. When I get a bunch of pistols together like this, I can't help but think of regular car reviews. Which Glock is best Glock? My Glock is best because Half-Life 1. My Glock is best because California roster. My Glock is best because... No, I'm kidding, obviously. Literally not one person thinks Gen 4 is the best Glock generation. I may have only bought my Gen 2 Glock 17 because of Half-Life 1, but I bought my Gen 2 Glock 19 because I honestly think it's still as much handgun as I could ever want or need. Why would I take a Gen 2 Glock 19 over any other? I have a few reasons, some sensible and some kind of petty. To start, my grip preference is no finger grooves. I don't mind them on the G17, and I can tolerate them on a G19, but all things being equal, I say skip them. But I don't like the Gen 5 Glocks. I don't like the ambidextrous slide release. I don't like the interchangeable back straps. I don't like the mismatched contours on the front of the slide. And I hate the shinier black finish. The old Glock Tenefer finish is bomb proof. You can throw your Glock or drag it through a dry creek bed and then wipe it clean with a finger. The Gen 5 finish just doesn't do it for me. It looks shiny and cheap and doesn't wear the same. I also don't like forward slide serrations, so the FSG-19 doesn't excite me. 
I don't know about you, but I can do a press check in several ways that don't require front serrations. If you're in a situation where your hands are slick with blood and you're trying to check the chamber, but my god, there's blood everywhere. You're trying to staunch the bleeding, but it won't stop, and your pants are soaked through so you can't wipe your hands. Oh god, oh fuck. Well, I don't think a press check is really what you need to be worried about, first of all. Secondly, the extractor doubles as a loaded chamber indicator. And third, you can actually see the rim of the cartridge through the gap between the extractor and the chamber. Don't tell anyone, though, that's a secret ninja trick just for you and me. The other reason I like the Gen 2 G19 is because I can shoot it really well. My Gen 2 G19 was produced around 1991 based on the serial number and is totally stock. Stock trigger, stock controls, even the stock bucket sights. There are noticeable differences in trigger feel between generations. Gen 5s are pretty good, Gen 4s are pretty bad, Gen 3s are pretty average, but a broken-in Gen 2 trigger is really something. It's much better than the trigger on my Gen 3 G19 or my Gen 4 G17. Some of that, I'm sure, is just due to wear. Glock triggers improve as they break in, and my Gen 2 G19 was well used when I got it, and I've shot it more than all my other Glocks put together. For some reason, the Gen 2 G19 is my favorite gun to shoot at the range, and it's the one I tend to run the most drills with, too. 10.08. Stay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. So it shoots great and I love the ergonomics. The only thing I'm really missing on the Gen 2 G19 is an accessory rail. I mean, I'm not going to say no to an accessory rail, but I don't consider a weapon light a vital feature of a concealed carry piece. In my opinion, the G19 is best as a carry gun that can be pressed into service in other roles without much difficulty. A Glock 17 is a duty handgun. Notice this video isn't about how the Glock 17 Gen 2 is the best gun ever made. I remain unconvinced that a weapon light is a must for concealed carry, but it does seem like the internet groupthink is moving in that direction. I think anyone who says you can't make hits in low light with tritium sights is probably trying to justify the purchase of a new Surefire to the wife. So don't argue with them too much, they need to chalk up that W. Okay, I feel like there are going to be a lot of comments filled with conspiracy theories that James really does have my family or is paying me part of his share of the Glock bribe to say nice things about Glock pistols. But sorry guys, I've been a boring blocky boy long before I first met Jamothy J. Reeve Esquire. The G19 Gen 3 was the first pistol I ever bought, and no matter what else I shoot, I keep coming back to Glock. I'm gonna try shooting the test. This is 10 shots in 10 seconds at 10 yards on a timer from low ready. This is uh, Glock 19 Gen 3. Let's go for it. Seven point one four seconds. I even unironically believe in Glock perfection, but my version of Glock perfection is probably different than yours. If Glocks are so perfect, why, you ask, do you have to modify them? And that's where you're missing the point. Glock perfection means a lot of things. Glock perfection means that you can still easily find high quality modern tactical holsters that will fit a gun made in 1988. Glock perfection means that you can still buy inexpensive brand new production magazines for a gun made in 1984. Glock perfection means aftermarket support that makes the Glock into a platform as much as it is a gun. Glock perfection means you don't have to do any of that and you'll still end up with a gun as capable as anything else on the market today. If somebody says you can't shoot a Glock with stock sights, they can't shoot. If somebody says you can't shoot a Glock with a stock trigger, they can't shoot. If somebody gets all uppity about grip angle or says bore axis doesn't matter, have them shoot an HK VP9 and a G19 back to back. Geez, Hop, did you make this whole video just because you want to talk about how much you like the G19 Gen 2? Yes, I sure did. I'm not going to say you should sell your Generation 5 Glock and go track down a used Gen 2. That's not the point of this video at all. I am saying that if you happen to buy a Generation 2 Glock 19 in 1988, there has been no compelling reason to replace it in the last 32 years. Alright, that's the show. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like TFB TV and you'd like to support us, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and ring the notification bell. 
We would also appreciate it if you would check out our sponsors. Ventura Munition sponsors TFB TV and provides ammunition for us to do these reviews. TFB TV is also sponsored by Top Gun Supply. Go check them out, they've got pretty much everything you could need for the range. If you'd like to support us directly, you could do so by joining our Subscribestar or Patreon. Links to both of those are in the video description. Alright, that's all for now. See you next time.